Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge for MyBet.com. This is Dylan and in this seventh and final episode of our Riders of the Storm series, we'll look in great detail at both the short stack and mid stack strategies that I had mentioned in previous videos. And before we get there, we'll also look at a comment from one of our viewers at YouTube who had requested that we look at a couple of 4-betting and 5-betting scenarios when you're holding Ace-King. So before we get into what I've coined as the hybrid strategy for mid-stack play at both the full ring and six max tables, I want to directly address a comment that was made by one of our viewers at YouTube, which was very fitting actually to conclude all of our strategy videos on big stack play as such. And what this individual had asked is that I look at or post basically a few yeah, a few hands where I'm holding ace-king, uh, either suited or off-suited, and I'm facing either a three-bet or a four-bet, and how that then looks when you shove over the top all in for a full hundred big blinds. And that's a really, really fantastic request, um, also quite complicated, and we'll get into the details uh, concerning that because it is so very crucial for two points. One is determining your expected value on any given move. This is something that I think even some very advanced players don't properly understand and it is a very very crucial concept for expert level play. Uh, in order to understand expected value one of the key concepts involved in expected value is then fold equity. So there's equity as such which is very simply put your share of any given pot based on the strength of your hand in relation to either your opponent's hands or ranges of hands. That is yeah, equity in a nutshell. Fold equity is, as you see here on the slide below, very simply put, the probability that your opponent will fold. Now, why is this important? Well, if you are looking at what any given bet, raise, or shove all in, will look like for your bottom line, basically, for your bankroll, in the long run, you have to understand both of these concepts. Right? You have to understand equity, you have to understand fold equity, and you have to understand how these two then combine to produce your expected value for that move. So if you guys go to YouTube and you then search for Stone Poker Challenge number 3B, that's the video where the comment was posted, or basically you go to the MyBet channel at YouTube you will then land here and what you can do is from the feed, either the feed or from the uploads you can then come down here and find all the different videos that we've produced here for the Rise of the Storm series you go here to Storm Poker Challenge number 3B <laughs> and you then come to yeah basically the the video itself and that's where this comment was posted and it's actually important that we look at this in detail so that you guys know exactly what was uh, what was meant and actually before we get into the details themselves and uh, there was another post here from this person asking if I live in Berlin and as a matter of fact as of the publication of this video I am living in Berlin but that may or may not be the case by the time it hits uh, YouTube or Facebook and yeah okay, quickly to that uh, the comment itself was right here the request and good to be the king here he asks uh, if I could actually post some ace king versus three bets and four bets in future videos um, he's saying that he typically shoves 100 big blind stacks right? so big stack strategy uh, and it hasn't been working out lately and yeah he posts here great vids again thanks to all of you guys for your feedback all your comments on the videos it's all been quite positive we appreciate that and in the future and this is the last video of the Riders of the Storm series but in the future we plan to do um, yeah hopefully quite a few more series and we will base that on yeah your feedback actually what you guys want to want to learn but anyways thank you for the compliments uh, appreciate it hope you guys got a lot out of it as always 
and I won't unfortunately be able to reply directly to all these comments, but this one was so fitting for purposes and basically rounding off uh, big stack strategy play as such with yeah, expected value calculations. So again, thanks to both you guys. Um, and I wrote back here that basically the request is itself very simple, but the answer is extremely complicated because there's so many, so many different factors that uh, come into play here. Whether you're in a heads-up pot, multi-way pot, uh, what the previous action was, what the effect of stacks are, stuff like that, and you guys can just pause the video and read through this at your leisure. Um, yeah, that's that was the very brief answer that I gave him here for lack of space. Uh, then I posted some general ranges when you're holding ace king versus different um, different three bet ranges, for example. And yeah, that's that's how that looks in general. And now I will go into the very specific details of how to actually work this out, right? Um, final point here was, yeah, again, thanks. And he's saying that he's usually four bet shoving if the villain's three bet percentage is 7% uh, or more. So that's important. We're gonna keep that in mind as we move forward. So before we get into the actual expected value calculations, there are a few things that you guys really need to know. Uh, and this is actually fundamental knowledge for all players out there who want to become experts in the shortest amount of time. It's going to be a bit math intensive, but um, yeah, I'll try and keep this as brief as possible and as simple as possible so that you guys can get the principles of it and then apply that at the tables. Right? You don't have to be a math whiz uh, to understand expected value. You don't have to be a math whiz to understand fold equity. Although it's good that you have a general grasp of how it functions, right? at least intuitively. So, first and foremost, you guys got to understand there are a total of 1,326 combinations that um, you, the hero, um, we use yeah, the term hero, especially in online poker terms, for yeah, the player from the player's perspective, right? That means you. And there are 1,225 combinations of whole cards that your opponent, the so-called villain, can receive when you then know two of the 52 cards in the deck. Right, so from a 52 card deck, there are 1,326 ways you can get your pocket cards. And your villain then, when you know two cards of those 52, has in 1,225 different ways to receive his pocket cards. That um, expresses hands is 169 total preflop hands in Texas Hold'em. Pocket pairs. There are six combinations of receiving any given pocket pair. So there's six ways to receive a pair of aces, you know, ace of diamonds, ace of spades, ace, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, down the line. So when you hold ace king, you're removing um, some of the different ways that your opponent can receive, for example, a pair of aces or a pair of kings. And in this case, with the so-called card removal, he or she doesn't have six combinations or ways of receiving a pocket pair, rather only three for a pair of aces or a pair of kings. Of course, all of the pairs still have the six combinations, right? Now, that's that's important to know when you're concerned uh, when you're considering fold equity. All right, so again, different ways to calculate this, but this is a general overview, and I hope that's I hope that's clear. So, when you hold any given hand, you've got to reduce the total number of combinations, respectively, for what your actual holding is. Good non pairs. That means any yeah non paired pre flop hand in Texas Hold'em again. Suited, there are four combinations of receiving that. So, for example, ace, uh, ace and king of spades, diamonds, clubs, and hearts. Now, if you hold an off suited ace king, right, there are no longer four combinations, rather three. Right, four whole cards involving the two that you already have in your hand. And yeah, again, guys, if this isn't clear, just drop me a quick line, but I think, I think for most of you guys out there, that will be clear. Um, non paired off suited is in 12 combos with. The card removal concerning hands that have an ace or a king in them, there are now only nine combos. So that's essentially how you can make the different hands in Texas Hold'em and how the card removal functions, right, for the total hands that would include an ace and a king when you're actually holding ace king yourself. So this 169 total preflop hands I'd like to look at just briefly in um, Poker Stove to show you guys how that looks. So this may be old news for a lot of you guys out there watching this video, but it'll definitely be informative for a lot of players um, 
especially novice and recreational players, really, really looking to increase their, their level and, and get to expert play in the shortest amount of time. So what you guys see here in Poker Stove is basically a 13 by 13 grid, and all of the O's mean off-suited cards, and all the S's mean suited cards, all right? And you've got the pairs down the middle. So it's 13 by 13, that's exactly 169 hands, and that's how that works out. And very briefly before we move forward, you know, the ranges, you can, as I've shown you guys in previous videos, you can actually use this bar here to move that, and then Poker Stove will default the different hands above, right, according to that percentage. So this 9.2% this range, this can also be the same, the same range. Let's just go ahead and put in any pair, drop off some of this nonsense, right, and look at that. You're at exactly the same percentage, but with a range that's highly weighted towards pocket pairs. All right, so just be careful with that. The percentage can be deceiving, okay, depending on the player you're facing. So this 9.2% is this range, right? It's also this range. So again, guys, just keep that in mind. When you're looking at percentages, especially when you're using uh, statistics online, uh, stats, stuff like that, this 9%, you know, or 5%, or whatever you're looking at for your villain, um, concerning in our case, 3-bet or 4-betting, um, that can be markedly different depending on the player, depending on the previous action, depending on the position. Please take all of that into consideration. Very, very good. And that is, I think, all you need to know right now for us to move forward. So concerning fold equity, okay, again, the probability your opponent will fold. There are different ways to calculate that. doesn't really matter um, as long as you get to the right result. And I put here three different ways you can look at fold equity or calculating it. So FE is, of course, the abbreviation for that. Um, this is an example where you steal raise from the small blind. Okay, so it's folded around to you. Doesn't matter either six max or full ring, but everybody folds and you're on in the small blind and you raise it up. What's the probability your opponent's going to fold? Well, one way of calculating fold equity is looking at the entire number of combinations that he could have. Right, you see your two cards, and we'll just stay with the ace-king example here. You see your two cards, so he's got 1,225 different combinations um, that, he can, that he could theoretically have. That, subtracted by the number of hands that he will call, divided by the total number of hands, equals your fold equity, i.e. the probability that he will fold his hands. So, if he has a, a very wide range, um, whatever, let's say 400 calling hands, right, it's gonna be 1225 minus 400 divided by 1225, and that's gonna give you the percentage that he's gonna fold. And let's look at point B here, which is gonna be the very concrete example that we'll analyze initially in our calculators, and that's the situation where you two bet, okay, so you make this open raise, and your opponent then re-raises, so he makes a, or she makes a three bet, and you come over the top you push all in as a 4-bet with ace-king and the way you figure out the fold equity that means the amount or the percentage that your opponent will fold versus your 4-bet shove, your 4-bet push all in and that's essentially taking all of the different hands, the combinations of his re-raise okay? and then also understanding or assuming in our case the number of hands that he will call with versus your 4-bet and you basically take the smaller of the two yeah, divided by his, his re-raise or his 3-bet combinations, and that's how you get the fold equity. So 1 minus the 4-bet calling hands divided by the 3-bet re-raise combinations. And you guys see here, I put you know hands here. Hands and combinations we'll just use more or less interchangeably. Option C, which I like yeah, quite a bit because it's very simple, but you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, a lot of guys use online statistics and they don't really know what to do with the numbers, um, or they, they read them incorrectly. And so you've, you've really got to, when you're using HUD stats, guys, again, please, please, please um, take position into consideration, take previous action into consideration. Don't just look at PFR, for example. That's going to be the entire average of all your opponent's raises, right, from all positions. you got to look at that little pop-up that shows you, okay, he's raising X percentage from this position, X from this position, he's re-raising X percent from this position in and out of position, etc. It gets quite complicated. 
but there are stats that are very exact. And I've listed two. <laughs> One is the three bet percentage per position, guys, per position. All right, this is also, if you look at normal three bet percentages, there's also a statistic that's just his entire average of three betting total. You also have to markedly adjust that percentage when you're looking at three betting in steals and re-steal scenarios, right? And all these terms, guys, we've covered in all the previous videos, so if this is a bit too much right now, please yeah, start from the beginning. We, you know, we cover all this kind of stuff slowly. And yeah, we just say <laughs> Storm Poker Challenge 01, uh, start there, maybe 02A, and then yeah, move forward. But again, three betting pre-flop is just a re-raise, all right? Definitely take the position of the given action into consideration when you are actually determining what your expected value will be for for your move. And the more information you have, the more correct information you have, the higher your expectation will be in general. Four bet shove expected value is what we're gonna analyze right now. And I'm gonna use again this fold equity formula, one minus the opponent's total four bet calling combinations dividing by his total three bet combinations. You can also do this um, exact same exact same calculation, come out to exactly the same figure by basically taking his total three bets, right, total combinations in, in his three bet range, minus the total combinations of his four bet calling range, and you divide that basically by the total combinations in his, in his three bet range. You get exactly the same number. So example one, we've got a heads up equity matchup for four bet shoving and the approximate equity, EQ, when holding ace of diamonds and king of hearts, we're gonna get very specific here, versus the following ranges. So if you look over in your HUD stats, and again guys, at the storm tables, we don't have our statistics, it's unfortunate right now, but in in the near future, I'm sure you will, and definitely at ring games, tournaments, stuff like that. So let's say, let's say we've got our hold the manager stats up, right? We've got our heads up display, the so-called HUD, and it's displaying all the different statistics for yeah, our opponents. And we make a two bet, so we raise open with ace of diamonds, king of hearts. Our opponent re-raises, pre-flop, he makes a, a three bet. All right, and we look at his position in the heads up stats in the HUD display, and we see a 3% three bet number. So what does this 3% actually mean? If you take the top 3% of all Texas hold of hands, most people will default it to jacks are better or ace king. And again, I'm going to go to Poker Stove to show you guys how that can be a bit different depending on your player. It doesn't mean this person's 3-bet range can also include some bluff, stuff like that. Um, but when it's the smaller the percentage is, guys, the more you need to be thinking in this area concerning what he's actually re-raising. So 3%, let's have a look. This is the range that I just put in, exactly 3%. All right, 3% can also be eights are better, not even including the ace-king. All right, it can only be ace-king suited, right? And tens are better, also possible. It can only be maybe uh, queens are better, ace-king, and maybe let's throw in the ace-queen suited, right? Changes changes your equity subtly versus your specific holding, which in our case again is the ace king offsuit. And yes, all right, so that's three percent. You can also, which is a very neat feature here, you can also just type in three percent, hit tab, and that defaults in poker stove here to nines a better ace king suited, as we just said. You can, of course, clear that, scroll it over and then make your changes as you like. Right, so that's that's how you can play with this a bit, guys. Get different ranges. Then you come over here to basically evaluate, and you see that ace-king offsuit versus nines are better ace-queen suited only has 40, more or less 42% to the river if both of you guys push all in. What is equity? Again, that is very simply put, the share of the pot when it all gets in the middle. Let's take a concrete example here. You and I both have 100 big blinds and we're playing NL100. So we both have 100 US dollars in our stacks. I 2 bet, you 3 bet with this range, and I 4 bet all in and you call me. All right, and you are actually.
actually on, let's say, a pair of nines. You actually call really wide with a pair of nines exactly. All right, you're actually ahead, which is a normal matchup, as I showed you, yeah, showed you guys, um, I think, in the second episode of the series, that when you have a pair versus two over cards, it's very often a 10% difference. Yeah, the pair is very often basically at 55%, versus 45% for the overcards. Good. If it's suited, it's a bit better. But how much? You guys remember? <laughs> right. Only about 3 or 4%. Have a look at this. Okay. That didn't change a lot. I mean, it's you're still flipping. You're still behind. But when you're suited, guys, don't think that that makes your hand much stronger. It's, it's literally 3 to 4% on average, not more. So the suitedness of, of your hand, good. Add a couple percentage points there for your equity, but yeah, no big deal. Anyway, so we shove all in with our ace king offsuit for betting, and you call us actually relatively light um, for a shove, a four bet shove of that size with a pair of nines. You're actually ahead versus the actual holding. All right, so $200 goes in the middle. This guy's going to take down 110 and change, and I'm going to take down then my 90, a little under 90. And that's that's how that works, guys. That's equity versus specific hands. All right. Equity being basically the share of the pot after it goes all in the middle, less the rake. Very good. We've got 3%, and we're going to assume these ranges, guys. So with these calculations, again, that's why I couldn't answer uh, good to be the king there specifically in the YouTube comment because it is so complex. Um, in general, we're going to make some assumptions, and we're going to then simplify the hell out of that once we get to the calculator. So we've got a guy on a 3% range. We look at his HUD stats. We see, okay, it's 3% for three betting in position versus my mid position open raise with ace king offsuit. Good, we see 3%. What does that mean concerning combinations? Well, there are 40 combinations. Why is that? Well, six ways to make a pair of jacks, six ways to make a pair of queens, kings and aces, right? But we saw that, of course, when we're holding ace king, that that reduces the total number of aces and kings he could have. Right, pairs of aces and kings, and also reduces the total combinations of uh, the same hand that we actually hold. So without the card removal effect, that's 40 combinations total. So basically, jack, queen, king, and aces. That's 4 times 6, 24, plus 16 different ways of making any ace-king is then 40 total combinations. However, we hold the ace-king, we know that. So his total hands or total combinations that he could have are then 27. Right, that's a card removal effect, so called card removal, as I've underlined here. Fantastic. If he three bets and always calls, that means he calls 100% of his re-raise range pre-flop when we shove over the top, we're going to have an equity with our hand, ace, king, ace of diamonds, king of hearts, versus that entire range right at 39.8%. And again, guys, please don't believe a single word I'm saying. But check it out, right? Uh, any coach tells you something, don't just buy it. Check it out. How can you test this? How can you check it? Well, good old poker stuff. So yet again, we've got player two. We're going to put him on jacks or better. Or ace king. Apply. Versus our ace of diamonds, king of hearts. Lo and behold, 39.785% is our probability of winning this hand and also the share of our pot when he never folds. All right, so that's our equity. Now, if, however, we don't think he's going to call with jacks and we don't think he's going to call us down with ace-king when we four-bet over the top, he's only going to call us, our assumption is that he's only going to call us with queens or better. It means a pair of queens, kings, or aces. That range is 1.4%. All right, so if you're using HUD stats, for example, you'd see maybe you know, a four-bet call percentage of exactly this, maybe 1, maybe 1.5, whatever. Um, good, so you, we then assume that he's calling us with this range. All right, six different ways of making each pair equals 18 total hands or combinations. However, we have the card removal effect for the kings and aces. So from a total normal 18 different ways of basically making this range, it's now only 12. And what does that mean for our equity? Well, if we shove with, again, the ace of diamonds, king of hearts, and we assume that he's only going to call us with queens or better. When he does call us, we're going to have only about 31% to the river. 
concerning our probability of taking down that hand or taking down that pot. And that's how this works. So this is actual equity. That means our hand, our actual hand versus the entire range that our opponent is playing. So his three bet range we see here at 3%. We see his four bet calling range at 1.4%. So we assume that he's raising, he's re-raising our open raise, our two bet with jacks or better ace king and he's only going to call us down with queens kings or aces that means he's going to fold the ace kings and the jacks within this range so he's only calling he's raising this and he's only calling this versus our versus our shove all right how do you determine the fold equity well again this is this is the way i prefer it guys uh, one minus the total calling hands divided by the total raising hands i think that's the simplest way to do it um, it works for me somehow. <laughs> so, and, and the other good thing is, you know, when I look at this, um, 18 divided by 40, I can also see that it's more or less one to two, right, or two to one. So I know that he's more or less folding a bit more than half of his range. That's kind of how I guesstimate it. All right, I think that's a good tip, just the beginning of this, so that you guys know how that works. So, you know, if I'm thinking, yeah, he's he's pitching in 22 of the 40 hands. Good. He's a his fold equity or my fold equity. The probability he's going to fold is just over fifty percent. That's good enough for me. Um, the very exact calculation is fifty five percent. All right. So he's folding exactly fifty five percent of his three bet range, his re raise range pre flop. What does that mean with the card removal? The tighter the range is, uh, well, okay, it depends on your holding too. Um, but the tighter the range is when you're holding Ace King the less the card removal will change your fold equity. In this case, it's only 0.56% different, or difference. So again, yeah, the tighter the range is, um, and the stronger you're holding, <laughs> then yeah, the less the card removal effect will affect um, your actual fold equity. However, the wider these three bit ranges are, and in six max play with a lot of like players, that's yeah. The three bet's going to be much wider than three percent, and especially in steals and resteals, right? Uh, blind battles, stuff like that. I mean, you may even see ten and twelve, maybe fifteen percent three bets, and that's going to be a market difference concerning the calculations. We'll look at a couple of those here in just a sec. All right, so recap, guys. This is this is our scenario, our actual scenario. We hold Ace of Diamonds, King of Hearts, and we get re-raised pre-flop, and we see a three percent three bet for our one opponent, and we put him on jacks or better ace king. We come over the top, we four bet, and good to be the king's question is when I when I four bet then, or five bet, but in this case four bet with 100 big blinds, what does that look like? Good. We four bet over the top, we think he's going to call us with queens or better, a range of 1.4%. When he does so, we're going to have just at 31% equity to the river. We assume that if he's raising this and only calling with this, that our fold equity will be right at 55, 56%. Now, there is an approximation to the fold equity, which I just kind of mentioned. It's one minus the four bet calling percentage divided by the total three bet percentage equals, yeah, again, 0.14 divided by three at 53.3%. Now, that isn't that far off, all right? So if I, if I'm just playing, let's say I'm playing five, six, ten tables, and yeah, even yeah, even fewer, whatever. And I don't have time to get in here and actually mentally, you know, calculate. Okay, how many combinations uh, are included in his pairs for this range? How many combinations are included in his non-suited non-pairs, his suited pair, yeah, non-pairs, whatever. Um, you know, I I'm not gonna do that on the fly. All right, if I'm playing live poker, yeah, maybe. Um, but again, there I probably just guesstimate. And the really good approximation is exactly this. Look at the percentage, right, that he opens with or that he re-raises with. Look at the percentage that you assume he'll call with, and basically divide the two. So I'm seeing 1.5 and 3, right? That's half of it, more or less half of his range he's folding. More or less. Again, it's an approximation, guys. Um, this ace king is 16 combinations, whereas pairs are only six, right? So if you assume that he's, you know, his calling range is highly weighted towards calling with pairs. Uh, when he's folding all ace kings and ace queens, that can be a, a really big difference, actually. So, again, this is an approximation, and I use it myself on the fly. I think it's it's useful for you guys. 
if you don't want to get into all this nonsense with uh, combinations and card removal and yeah, different different range of stuff like that. In general, take his open range, um, divide it by, or other way around, take his calling range, divide it by his open range, and you're going to get more or less at yeah, the full equity. Right? It's approximation, guys. Please don't quote me out of context, but it's close enough in many cases. In many cases. All right, example two. We two bet. We open raise with our ace of diamonds, king of hearts. Villain three bets. He re raises, and this time he's on more of a laggy three bet range. All right, so eight point four percent, which we have defaulted. We have assumed is a pair of sevens or better. Ace jack or better. That means ace jack, ace queen, or ace king, and any king queen. That means suited or off suited. If our opponent never folds, so he raises this, he three bets this, or he re raises this with sevens or better, ace jack or better, or king queen, and he never folds. All right, so his three bet is exactly his four bet calling percentage. Our equity versus that entire range when holding ace of diamonds, king of hearts, is 55%. So in a heads up pot, we're good to go. Now, if we think he will fold quite a bit of that, right, he'll only call us down with tens or better, or ace queen or better then we're going to see in his 4-bet calling range as a percentage 4.7. Now, our equity versus that entire range with the ace-king is 49%. Still good in the heads-up pot given the dead money. So what does the fold equity calculation look like in this scenario? Our villain 3-bets at 8.5% more or less. All right, we put him on 7s or better, ace-jack or better, king-queen. And he's going to call us down with any pair of 10s or better, any ace-queen, any ace-king. All right, quick pop quiz. We've got how many pairs here with the calling range, the four-bet call range? We've got tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. It's five total pairs times six combinations is 30 hens. Now, any non-paired whole cards are 16 total combinations. So that's going to be ace, queen, or ace, king, 16 a pop at 32, hence the 62 total hands. So 32 total combinations for this range, ace queens or ace kings, off suit or suit, and any pair of tens, any pair of jacks, queens, kings, or aces. It's a total of 62 hands that he'll call us with. However, he raised with 112. So of the 112, he is calling, yeah, not half, but a um, bit over half in this case. And that comes out to what he's folding at right at 45%. So he's going to fold about 45% of this entire range here when he calls us with tens or better ace queen. That does look different with our card removal, doesn't it? Because we've got ace of diamonds, king of hearts in our hand, we know that. So the card removal is not 62 hands for uh, his calling range, rather 45, not 112 for his three bet range, rather 87. And you're seeing here, guys, the wider they go, the more they're folding, the more that card removal effect will have yeah, a relatively big difference, actually, on your total expected value calculation that we'll get into here shortly. So instead of 40, 44.6% fold equity that we would assume, in actuality, when we know our whole cards, and yeah, we, we assume that these ranges are, are correct, then our fold equity is not... Yeah, again, 44.6%, rather, over 48%. And that's, yeah, that's that's pretty big. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. The card removal does have a difference on the fold equity calculation. However, the equity calculation, that means just your hand versus that range, remains the same because this card removal effect has been factored in, at least as far as I can see uh, with poker stuff. So the final point here on the slide is very, very important. And it's also in direct connection with what um, Good to Be the King posted there, uh, his last comment, saying that he is generally shoving, four bet shoving over the top with Ace King when his opponent is three betting at seven percent or more. That's what he meant with that. And here I'm just going to say in general for everybody watching this video with HUD stats, heads up display stats. Right, um, I use Holder Manager myself. Brilliant program. You just really got to be careful and you got to be clear on the position, right? You got to be clear on the percentage that this guy's three betting and four betting and five betting 
from the given position, uh, position with the given action. And more importantly, you have to have a relatively high sample size, so-called n, to really start putting faith in those numbers, really start trusting those numbers that you see then in your statistics. So that means if you've got a really uh, tight player and you've only got, let's say, a thousand hands on the guy, you, you're not going to see a whole lot of four bet stats and five bet stats in general. Um, if you get a lag, you're going to see you're going to see some pretty high numbers already within the first hundred hands, right? So you've got to, you know, I've, I've done an entire series, guys, on uh, poker math. It's entitled "The Essentials Made Easy." If you're into this kind of stuff, definitely check that out. But more importantly, as uh, a series uh, that I did on player profiling, right? And that's basically understanding the numbers. In online play and then yeah all the nonverbal communication going on in the live environment definitely check those out when you guys get a chance but again as a general point the HUD stats guys the higher the sample size the higher the in the more you can trust these numbers the lower the in the more you've got to you got to be really really careful right because this percentage right ie range is gonna change markedly depending on yeah, depending on the sample size, depending on the opponent, depending on the position, uh, depending on the action, and again, always take into consideration if you're in a steal resteal uh, scenario or a blind battle. And the call range is also going to be much wider because they know that you and the blinds are going to be re-stealing, re-raising, three-betting with a much wider range very often than this. If a guy is yeah, raising, let's say, 15%. A lot of guys are going to re-steal this. Any suited Broadway King Queen would definitely be on the list. You know, stuff like this. And they're going to throw in some suited connectors. Uh, they're going to throw in some one-gap suited connectors here. Right? It, it may even be three-betting as a re-steal up to 18, 19, 20%, uh, depending on the history and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just just be just be ready for that, right? And all of a sudden, you get your ace king still versus that three bet, and now you shove, and you're at fifty six percent. So, again, it's all it's all relative, guys. It's all situationally conditioned. Uh, it's all conditioned by the opponents, and th these are different things that you guys should definitely definitely keep in mind uh, as we move forward here with the actual calculations. Again, this is Dylan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely hope it was useful for your games. Till then, on behalf of the entire team here, all the best and best of luck at the tables.